Recently in Chicago, the Cook County Board of Commissioners passed the county's first single member board district map. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. But um, there was a lot of opposition from our area politicians to this map. Hi, I'm Tia Mugabe, and in this edition of Here We Are, we're going to talk about that map and other political issues. Joining me in this discussion today are the uh, Cook County Board of Commissioner, John Stroger, who is the chair of the Finance Committee and Democratic candidate for the Office of Cook County Board President. We also have Mr. Bruce Crosby of the Committee to Preserve Voting Rights, who is also running for the Cook County Board President seat. And Mr. Crosby is running under the Hare Washington Party banner. I want to thank you both for coming to the program. Welcome to Here We Are. Well, thank you for inviting me. Okay. Uh, my first question is, why is a uh, redistricting map or uh, plan necessary? Well, uh, I was elected to the county board in 1970. And at that time, everyone ran from two districts, the city of Chicago or outside of the city of Chicago. And you had to depend exclusively on the party organizations to be nominated and eventually elected. Once I had become a county commissioner, I started dealing with the League of Women Voters and, and other groups, and particularly after the Home Rule Commission report, to look into developing a one-man, one-vote concept for the Board of Commissioners. And I also thought that if we had single-member districts, that there would be more accessibility to the commissioners and the public could hold them more accountable for their action. So I started pushing district representation. And it went all the way through from the 70s to just recently in the 90s that we've been able to come up with a map. And in 1994, commissioners will be elected from 17 districts. Now, you said there was a lot of opposition. There was some opposition, but the majority of the people was in favor of the map. We held hearings all over the county of Cook. We allowed for the first time in the history of map making an opportunity for anyone to go in and, and interact and try to develop maps that they considered that was fair. In my role as one of the commissioners, I brought on Attorney James Montgomery and Mr. Chestain came on as advisors to the committee so that our input at the committee level would be in the map process. The Urban League was deeply involved as so as uh, Mr. Crosby and his group. So we tried to run an open process that would be fair, give every community, every political leader an opportunity to be involved in the process. Yeah, I want to thank you, T.R., for uh, giving us this opportunity to, to discuss this very important issue. Um, for years, Cook County government has been uh, violating the Voting Rights Act. Uh, for years, we haven't had a one-man, one-vote uh, principle operating in Cook County government. And it took uh, t almost 20 years, according to Mr. Stroger, of his involvement to uh, get single-member districts in Cook County. Um, we're concerned because uh, to us it's a major national and international issue, this voting rights violation that's been taking place in regards to Cook County government. Uh, it was 1980 in a case called Bowdoin versus Mobile where the uh, U.S. Supreme Court said that at-large elections violated the 14th and the 15th Amendment of the Constitution as well as the Voting Rights Act. So after uh, we put tremendous pressure on the board and people like John Stroger, they decided to um, vote for a referendum which called for the Cook County Board to go to the single member districts. Uh, we're concerned about the map that was proposed by the board. Um, we Bruce, could we go back to... Let uh, me finish, John. Yeah, well, let's, before let, let we get finish. into the map, let, let, okay, let, let me do the, let let me do this. Let before, me finish, before we let get into the John. map, we ought to get into the origin and the history. You said let, that, let, let, uh, let, me finish, let me allow him a chance to finish, then I'll give you a chance oh, to make your comment. Okay, whatever, that's, that's the way we wanted to do it. Whatever you, know, you want to comment, do, it, you're the leader, comment. but he's okay. misleading. Uh, uh, well, you get a chance to be able to support whatever you agree with him on. What we're concerned about is that the map that was finally proposed by the board, um, it limit 
the number of seats African Americans can have. Um, there were three groups who submitted maps. They created six African American districts in Cook County. It was the Harold Washington Party, Progressive Independent Committeeman, the Committee to Preserve Voting Rights, and um, uh, Victor Crown and Dick Barnett with Illinois Politics Magazine. Um, those three groups uh, showed the Cook County Board that you could draw six districts. Now, we basically were compromising because we feel that the district size, average size of a district is 300,298 people. We felt that that size was just too large. There is no city outside, in this state, outside the city of Chicago, that has a population of 300,298. So at the first public hearing, we proposed to the Cook County Board to increase the number of districts from 17 to 65. That would make the average size of a district 79,000 people. That would increase the number of African Americans on the district. That would increase the number of African American districts that could be drawn in the suburban areas, increase the number of Hispanics on the district. Um, but of course, the county board wouldn't go along with our proposal. So we feel that- Are we gonna, we're gonna lose the thought which uh, led him to go on an erroneous path. And that was the fact that Bruce, this Bruce and his brother, work with me and know that from the very beginning, day one, that I was out there trying to change the process. And I was doing it because in 1970, we came up with a new constitution, Article 7 of the new constitution, dealing with local government, gave us a right to change the form of our government. We could either do it uh, in terms of election of commissioners, the board could change the process, or uh, we could go to referendum. I worked extremely hard from the very beginning, and Bruce was one of the people who was always there trying to get Cook County Board to change. Cook County Board of Commissioners would not change. Republicans and our Democrat. Then in 1980, uh, the Republicans went to court to increase the membership of the board. They, I, uh, hired and didn't have to pay, he did it pro bono, Attorney Mitchell Ware to come in and intercede or intervene, as we say, in the court to try to get the uh, courts to set up district representations, which I consider to be fair. Bruce was still, at that time, with us. Uh, then, in the, when it was crystal clear that we were not going to get uh, the board members to vote district representations. Then I started working with different groups trying to get the question on the ballot so that the voters could make the determination because that's one of the methods by which the Constitution al allowed us to do that. And eventually I got the board to agree to let the board, uh, let the voters have a referendum. And in 1990, the voters of this county, both in the city and the suburb, concurred in our recommendation that we should have district representation. And after that, it's when we got into the make it a map. The question on the ballot was, shall Cook County be divided into 17 numerically equal districts? That was the question. Then when we got into the discussion, for some reason unknown to me and only known to Bruce, Bruce started coming in asking for 65 districts, but the, the question that had been resolved by the public that it had to be 17 districts. Bruce knows, and I think he's prepared to say today, that he would have to go back to the public to have the opportunity to get 65 districts. But even if he had 65 districts, who could afford to pay for that? How could you manage that government process with 65 people on the board trying to make business decisions? So I just want to correct the records because up until recently, Bruce was always with me until he started coming up with the 65. And, and when he became the leader of the Harold Washington Progressive Party, I, don't want, I want to be right. That's when Bruce's uh, philosophy about what should be done changed. And, and he has a right to do that. 
-hmm. But I just want the records to be set okay. straight. And I want to give you a chance to answer that. Then I want to ask you a question about yeah. the uh, public involvement. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I broke with John Stroger some time ago uh, because he wanted to work with inside the Democratic Party to change. Uh, and I felt that what we had to do was take this issue into a federal court under a voting rights violation. We never could get his support in regards to putting the dollars and the resources together with the black legal community to challenge the at-large election process as violating the Voting Rights Act in court. He, though, was able to get the Democratic Party to agree to endorse more blacks to be on the county board. And finally, because we were moving closer and closer to going into court and to challenging the, the single, the at-large elections, uh, they pushed and they compromised to go with a referendum. Um, our problem with, with the process uh, to date is that um, 65 districts, we felt, would bring better accountability. Once again, outside the city of Chicago in the state of Illinois, there is no city that has a population of 300,298 people. You got to remember that Cook County is larger than 37 states. So when our voting rights are being violated here in Cook County, it's a major national and international issue. We plan on taking this current map into court because we feel like it violates the Voting Rights Act. Up on the screen now, they're showing you our proposed 65-member map, which would create 18 African-American districts, four Hispanic districts, uh, five districts with no racial majority, and 38 white districts. It will provide an opportunity for uh, African Americans in suburban Cook County to get elected to the board for the first time. The most disenfranchised African American community in Cook County is the African Americans who live in suburban Cook County. And that's who we're really fighting for. Okay, so what you're saying is that a 17 single member board um, would not best represent the Cook County population. Right. Okay. Did you want to comment on that or could I ask Well, uh, first, under the law, we cannot make it 6 to 5. We would have to go back to the people and the people would have to make that determination, mm -hmm. all of the people. And you also raised the issue about who would fund, how it would be funded. Yeah, how it would be funded. But uh, uh, I would like to correct something that was said. In 1980, Attorney Mitchell Ware was retained by me to file a petition as an intervener in a case that had been filed by the Republicans to get additional members on the board representing suburban communities. In my petition, I was saying that the one man, one vote concept had been violated and that we should have district representations, not at large elections from the two districts, Chicago and the suburban community. So I've been out front at every stage in trying to make the system change because I have always felt like for us to have more political independence, we had to have district representation. For the people to have access to us, they had to know who we were. The only way that they could hold us accountable, they had to know who we were. And then another thing, county government is is an invisible form of government. It's invisible because the representatives have been hidden from the public, and I thought district representation would put us out front where people would get to know what our government is. Most people don't know that we run hospitals, four hospitals, county hospital, Provident, Oak Forest, Surmac Hospital. Most people don't know we have clinics throughout the, the county. Most people don't know that we finance the courts. Most people don't know that uh, we run the Department of Correction, have highway departments, mm -hmm. environmental control. Mm -hmm. This is a method also to educate the public in Cook County about our government. And in conclusion, because I know that uh, you want to get us all into acting, but one of the things, we are quasi-legislative and supervisory. And it's more of a business. We're not like Springfield, where the legislature, the Senate, and the House is always just make passing bills. Very seldom we pass ordinances dealing with control of a person's life. We spend most of our time making business decisions, how to pay for what we purchase. 
whether or not we need to build a new jail, who's going who's gonna to construct a jail under those conditions, who's going to have the bonding right to, and all of these type of things. Those are business decisions. Mm -hmm. To have 65 people sitting in a room trying to make a business decision, nothing would ever be done, and only the public would lose. Because if you have 65 and multiply 65 by what you pay the commissioners now, the space, staff, and so forth, it would, it would be an additional burden on the people who are already overtaxed. We're trying to figure out how to get the public out from under this heavy taxation. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce's suggestion sure wouldn't help. Uh, but see, you want to have it both ways, John. What we're calling for is accountability. First, let me go back to the issue you raised in regards to Mitchell Ware in the 1980 case. Uh, when Mitchell Ware was in court, uh, he, it was suggested to him by the judge that he come back in the court with a separate suit that just focus in on the voting rights violations and how they impact on African Americans in Cook County. But Mitchell Ware never came forward with that suit. If Mitchell Ware had of, we could have had this issue resolved by a federal court in the early 80s. The reason is because John Stroger did not want to challenge George Dunn and the leaders of the Democratic Party who have been historically involved in racial gerrymandering. It was 1981 where uh, the leaders of the Democratic Party were charged uh, with intentionally racially gerrymandering the state legislature. It was also in 1981 where the Democrats who controlled the Chicago City Council lost a voting rights case for racial gerrymandering. In regards to the 65 issue, we're talking about accountability. We're talking about one man, one vote. Now, to say that Cook County is larger than 37 states, and you know, I think I talked to you on the phone and I read you that whole list of who those 37 states include, but one of them is a state like Arkansas, a state that just elected the president, okay? And Missouri, Indiana, I mean, I, we can't even go through the list, but it's 37 states. So to have a 65 member board in a county that's larger than 37 states, which each state has a legislature, each state has a governor, congressional representatives, uh, senatorial representatives. So now to make 65, just to have representation on the local level, that's what we call people power and people's government. That's one man, one vote, John. Uh, the first largest county in the United States is Los Angeles. Uh, how many, and I'd like for Bruce to address this, how many supervisors do they have in Los Angeles? Isn't it five? Uh, they have well, more than eight but, but million John, people because there. They're violating, they have a, because they're violating the voting rights the, of people in California, don't, does that mean no, that, that, that we should it's, it's, go for that? No, because there's not one man, one vote in California. It's five does that for, mean Illinois five for, have one man, for one more vote? Than, for, it's five for more than eight no, you, million you, people with budgets nearly 30-some billion dollars. But the question is the nature of the government. Mm -hmm. uh, a state's business is entirely different uh, from a county. A county is a unit of the state government. Well, look at whether it. it's in Arkansas, Illinois, or California. The state is what we call Aren't a so African American oh, excuse me. Uh, the state, is, in the county jail. The state is what we call a sovereignty. The state is what we call a sovereignty. The state gives the power to local governments. The state can take the power. It's just like the king in the old days. The king was the sovereignty, could give and take. That concept came over in our state governments. Uh, every city derives its power from the state. Every county derives its power from the state. We are to carry out the responsibilities that's been designated by the state for us to carry on. The state makes all of these type of agreements, whether the state's a huge state uh, like our state in California, our small state like Arkansas. Arkansas has X number of counties. Each county has the same responsibilities we have, but it doesn't mean each county is largest in terms of population, in terms of area, as our county. Some may even be larger because in some of the rural areas like Montana, necessarily, you have so much territory. But in terms of population and money, Bruce is absolutely right. But in terms of power, the power of a county government 
regardless of whether it's Cook County or Los Angeles, is not the same as that. But, but see, John, state. you yeah. keep missing it. We're eighty percent of the people in Cook County jail. We're eighty percent of the people who use Cook County Hospital. So we need a better opportunity to have representatives from all those diverse African American communities. At three hundred thousand two hundred and ninety-eight, that's a hell of a job. Not one only is only one mayor in this whole state that has a population like that that they need to respond to their interests. We need to shrink it down. We need to have it down to a unit of seventy-nine thousand people. So that's how you get accountability. That's how you get one man, one vote. And that's how you can deal with the injustices that are taking place in Cook County government and the waste and the fraud. They give away uh, in Cook County government no big contracts that are $10 million, $15 million. And they want to, and John Stroger wants to cry because we're saying that the people need to be represented and it's going to cost $10 million. Well, could I say this, Bruce, uh, that, uh, you know, that's not. Uh, true, What's not uh, true? Uh, that we give away uh, no bid contracts unless they're professional contracts, which the law allows uh, any governmental entity to select lawyers and uh, accountants and necessary. But when you're buying goods and doing things that are more objective, where everybody can uh, be involved, we have to bid, and he knows that's the law. But I want to go back to something the, else. They, they Hold on. Could I, you keep making statements. Group didn't agree. Most of group. You were the out front advocating your map. And, and that is the absolute truth. You and your group. And, and in regards to the suburban uh, representation, I have been the guy out front trying to make certain that everybody be included, and especially the African Americans who live in the South suburban community who felt like they were not represented. And one other point I want to make. Bruce said that the judge said that come back in the court. The judge said that in his opinion he thought minorities were not being represented in the suburban community. But then he ultimately said, and this was Judge Hubert Will, he said but I think this whole thing is a political question. Now that's what was said uh, to us, that was said to our lawyers, and I argued with the judge and said, Judge, I don't agree with you. I think you have the power inherent to make the decision to create so you, districts. You're saying yeah. the judge didn't suggest that you come back just focusing in on those mm -hmm. No, the judge said what I the judge said what I said and mm -hmm. I don't recall seeing you in court at the time, Bruce. I mm -hmm. have a question yeah. though. You were talking about as far as support and input. Uh, there seemed to have been low uh, uh, publicity, you know, uh, as far as information given out to the community or to media outlets concerning the hearings and why was that? Well, that that's not true. The it was published the hearings was published in the paper. They were talked about on radio and TV, but they definitely was published. Community groups received communication. That's why Bruce and all of them knew about it. So uh, it goes back to what I was saying in the initial stage of this discussion, that seemed like people have no interest in county government because they don't know enough about county government. Mm -hmm. But right now, unfortunately, it seemed like uh, people are very apathetic about the whole governmental process, and that's why we have a fall off each election in the voter participation. And unfortunately, for minorities, Hispanics, African Americans, and some of the groups who need to be hyped up and participating, uh, we're not because it's true that a voteless people is a hopeless people, and if we're not involved, uh, we're not going to be empowered. Well, in regards to the whole issue of public participation, um, we criticize the districting committee for holding public hearings without having anything on the table. It was our uh, recommendation at the very first hearing that the district co districting committee draw a map, put a map on the table so then people have something to respond to. Basically what happened is they held six public hearings with nothing for the people to com comment on. So unless folks had some specific voting rights issues that they wanted to raise or had some specific suggestions in terms of what district they wanted their ward, uh, their, their district uh, uh, to be located in, uh, it wasn't anything to say. Um, so that was a, 
purposefully done so one, John Stroger could sit here today and say that they held public hearings, but they didn't have substantive public hearings. I saw some of those public hearings where only two people were present to testify. Uh, there was no special effort with the media. At no time did the districting committee or John Stroger hold a press conference to attempt to focus attention on that. And that's because this group of commissioners are attempting to draw a map to preserve their incumbencies. And the map that was drawn was a map to save John Stroger, a map that he can run for president of Cook County Board, a map that he could give the mayor's brother, John Daly, a district, all right, so he could get John Daly and the mayor's support to run for president of the county board. Yes, it was political to them, just like Judge Will said, but I'm saying today that it's an issue of voting rights. It's the issue of the U.S. Constitution, the 14th Amendment, the 15th Amendment, and the Voting Rights Act. That's what uh, Stroger and the members uh, on the board have been able to skillfully maneuver around the Voting Rights Act. Well, I want to say that uh, Bruce is going to be Bruce, and I can't retort uh, to everything Bruce say, but the Chicago Urban League participated they had nothing to gain from it. Uh, the Mexican American Legal Defense Group was deeply involved. They were only trying to get additional representation because they now only have one county commission on the board. And uh, we tried to be as fair and open as we possibly could in the process. And Bruce was there, and and for the first hearings, I think for nearly five of the hearings, Bruce would come and the only thing he would ever get up and give a long discussion on 65 districts when he knew in fact uh, that it couldn't legally be done. So he was trying to create confusion. And it was only at, I think at one of the last hearings that his brother, who's also one of our friends, came in uh, with the idea that probably we could go with a 17 district but they should be cut this way. So. They have never been aboard in trying to make something work that's practical. They've been more concerned in creating a political controversy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my job is to try to work out uh, a program where our people will be empowered and effectively empowered, where they can do something to help improve the quality of life for all of our people. I do not play political games. I am not. How could I have known, and still don't know, who's going to be supporting me for president of the county board, although I am running because I'm qualified to run. I'm a lawyer. Uh, I've been on the board. Practically every concept to change and improve the quality of that government I've been out front doing. I'm a former chairman of the board of trustees of Xavier University of New Orleans, Louisiana. I've been a vice president of a national bank, chairman of this loan committee help organize the hospital, saved uh, Cook County Hospital system when it was going into this uh, financial disaster. When Providence opened, uh, failed, I was out front going to see the secretary, the senators, <coughs> and necessary to try to get the government to give us that hospital. So, and then I just finished the term as president of the National Association of Counties, representing all the counties in America, mm -hmm. speaking to all the presidents, at first it was Bush, then Clinton came in, and all the leaders uh, in the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am running, no, I'm just no, telling you, gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna tell you why I think I'm qualified. You brought, the, you brought the issue up. You said I was qualified because I cut a district for Daly's brother, which you know was not true, so you I'm telling people why. Well, I cut a district uh, uh, for uh, like from, uh, if you say, because I live in a district, I would have been in a district regardless. Daly's brother would have been in a district regardless. So for you to come up and say, we scheme, calculated, thought this out, and cut districts just for us. You are in a district. Everybody's in a district. So Bruce, 
Let's stop playing these games. We well, as African Americans have played these play games, games too long. You're yeah. That's what well, you're no, doing. no. Okay, well, we're going to uh, talk about the qualifications of each one of you mm -hmm. for the office that you're running for. But I wanted to get back, you know, to the math issue. Right, and I like to do that too. You know, especially the public hearings. Now, John wants to say that all we did was come to those public hearings and talk about getting 65 districts, but that's not true. We came to those public hearings. We raised the whole issue of election data services. Election data services is the computer specialist that was hired by the county board. It's our contention that election data services specializes in racial gerrymandering. That they counseled Mike Madigan and his efforts to gerrymander the legislature. They counseled Jane Byrne and her efforts to, uh, to racially gerrymander the city council. Uh, we came and we raised the whole issue of the public hearings. We came and we urged them to come out with a map sooner. We came and we pointed out to them that September 14th, for example, was the first day for candidates to start circulating petitions and that they should have the map available before the 14th so candidates can know exactly what districts that they're running in. Uh, so there were a whole lot of other issues that we raised with this board other than just the 65 districts. I tell you, Bruce, uh, I came in saying all the time there could be not less than five African-American districts out of 17 and two Hispanic. And that was based on the figures and the numbers. And the Urban League produced and other groups five districts uh, and for African-Americans. And you were there, and most of the people, including groups like Bob Starks and others, did not agree with you, Bruce. You were out there alone uh, on your 65. You were, there was nobody out there but you. And even your brother came in, and he wasn't with you. So well, that, not my brother was with me. <laughs> not, not even you, your brother was with you. He, he, he came in uh, on the 17th, and how we should break the 17 down. And I was always wondering, why didn't you come in the day that your brother decided that it shouldn't be 6 to 5? No, no. One, one that's the misinterpretation <laughs> of the facts, John. What my brother did is he gave you the proposal uh, for 17 districts. Because, and if you check the transcripts of the record, uh, we recognize that, uh, that your board was not going to go with 65. And we made notice to your board that we were circulating a referendum to put a proposal on the November 5th general election ballot to increase the county board from 17 to 65. Uh, and uh, what we were doing is we were uh, dealing with political reality, and inside of that political reality, we were recommending that six districts be created. Now, because Bob Starks is off base, uh, or whoever, uh, doesn't mean that the Voting Rights Act changes. What we believe is the Voting Rights Act is what's going to be the determinant of this case. And I think one of the most interesting thing is the way that the Urban League has been used in this whole process. For example, uh, John nor any other commissioner submitted a map for approval. The Urban League's map um, for five districts was used by John Stroger and the black members on the Cook County Board so that they wouldn't have to have a particular proposal attached to their name, okay? So as a member of that committee, he did no work because he never drew a map. Okay, the map that they came out with, they want to say, is the Urban League's map. Now, the funny thing about the Urban League's map, in the Urban League's map, they leave a little hole uh, in one of the districts. And Chairman Lekowitz claims that they had to make up for the fact that the Urban League's proposal had a hole in one of those districts. Well, that hole just happened to be where John Daly lived. And in rectifying that hole, they created a whole new district for John Daly. This map that's passed is a classic case of racial gerrymandering. It stacks, it packs, and it fractures. There are 178,154 African Americans in Cook County that are not in any district any African-American district. Um, the funny thing, John wants to say that we represent 25.4% of the population. Therefore, we should have some, something like 25.4% of the seats. Well, what you got to remember 
is that that's if you're drawing districts that are 100% black or better. Uh, there's a principle uh, in voting rights called the 65% rule. Well, 65% of 300,298 will be something like 197,000 people. So if you started looking at drawing districts at 197,000, you then could create more districts. Our sixth district uh, that we drew happened to be 57.9% black. It didn't reach that 65% rule, but we felt because uh, we were using 1990 numbers, uh, because we knew that there was an undercount that this district roughly could be 60% black at that time, and it would eventually, if not this election, the following election, be a 65% black district. And we're concerned that this new single member district process gets started out and it's beginning with the African-American community losing a seat, a seat that we should have. It's better, John, for us to have the district now and lose it than not to have the district at all. And, and that's the point that we were making in creating the six districts. I could tell you that the Urban League consulted with groups out of Washington on the Voting Rights Act. Commissioner Steele and I talked with Tony. You know Tony. But what did you uh, and the commissioners no, do? You want to use the uh, Urban League. Uh, what we, did we, you we, do, we, John? Uh, uh, we uh, talked with individuals also in regards Who? to the Voting Rights Act. Uh, Tony Harrison, you know Tony, and we uh, also, and I was responsible for bringing Jim Montgomery on to be the lawyer to protect the interests of the No, 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 that's a lie. I was Jim Montgomery was protecting your interests. No, he, he wasn't protecting the black community. You hired him to represent no, you and the black members of the board. No, Don't sit up here and trick these people no, that's not into believing trick. that Jim Montgomery was representing black finish, people could, in Cook County. Could I finish he was my, representing could I finish, the black board members. Mr. Crosby, let him finish his comment, then you'll be able to, yeah, to uh, comment. First place, uh, Jim Montgomery was hired truly to represent what we considered the minority interest to make certain that the system as it was operating would operate fairly for the representatives who were African Americans on that board. That we who was asking for five districts plus uh, would be protected from a legal point of view in terms of complying with having a contiguous uh, districts compact numerically, not gerrymandered for political purpose, making certain the case laws and type things like that would be protect, uh, would be worked out, the Voting Rights Act, as he alluded to. Then I brought in one of his friends, Chesting. You can't say Chesting is not your friend. You know Chesting is not a organizational Democrat. And I brought him in because this young man is computer literate, plus he has political knowledge, and then he's not a part of our group. Uh, and uh, 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 excuse me, that, you know that he's not a part of our group. And then the Urban League had us working and talking with them, Dr. Collins of the Urban League, I think the other guy was Dr. Wilson, and they had a group of people who are skilled, knowledgeable, and well trained, as well as. Urban League was consulting with other organizations. But well, why would you, you know use that? a company that's been historically uh, involved in racial gerrymandering? I think you'll find that of all of those companies that came before us. Several companies came before now, us there was some and offered us... not been involved in racial well, use them as a You reference. are not talking and about the, the county the board point, now. No, Don't try to confuse on, the John, people. you told us about all you're your not, stories, you're not all the organizations well, but, you've but, been involved but, with. But I didn't talk about districting me. other that's than the county. That's right. I'm talking about districting. You are now on the... You are now talking... Look, let's let everyone can I know. Okay, let him point because uh, he was. Yeah, I want to finish, finish, but, but can can I finish? Uh, you should know that he's no can, longer can talking finish? about okay. the county board. He's okay. talking about the state okay. now. Thank okay. you, John. But you'll be able to raise that after he finished. I just want well, to this I'm not going to be an expert okay. on that. I don't know. Okay, but, but but hear me out. Hear me out because so you want to bring the Urban League out here as a legitimizer of the process, and I'm saying that the Urban League submitted to the state legislature a proposal that created 15 African-American districts in uh, Cook County for the state legislature. The federal court ruled that 17 districts are allowable under the Voting Rights Act League and the Cook County Board map is that they are districts for the state legislature because they were working with 
black members of the legislature to draw a map, just like they work with black members, Democrats, of the Cook County Board, who want to have districts large enough so they can get re-elected. These districts here have too much population in them. Uh, District 1 has a population of 208,000 African Americans. District 2, 237,000 African Americans. District 3, 227,000. District 4, 227,000. District. District 5, uh, 211,000. <laughs> I'm saying, John, that all you need is 197,000 to make it at 65%. And that if you would take that was left over at 197, and then you add to 178,154 African Americans that you fractured. And by fracturing, what I mean is they were placed in different other districts around the country, excuse me, around the county. So what you have is a classic case of racial gerrymandering. You have packing, stacking, and fracturing. That's why. Uh, the Democrats lost with election data services in the state legislature in 1981. That's why the uh, Democrats lost with election data services in 1981 on the city council remap case. That's why in the 1991 um, redistricting of the legislature with election data services, the Democrats lost in that. And that's why, John, you're going to be charged with violating the Voting Rights Act, and you're going to lose because you and the board did not create enough districts for African Americans allowable under the Voting Rights Act. Well, Bruce, I did everything possible to try to comply with both case law and statutory law in terms of being fair in drawing this map. We brought legal representation in to advise us as to what the legal repercussions of our action would be. Can a six district we have, be drawn? Uh, I, I am not certain. Did you try? But based on... Did you try? Well, Bruce... Yes or no? Did Bruce, you try to Bruce, draw a six district? Bruce, uh, there was no way uh, to draw a six district that would comply with what you've been talking about, we the did. Voting Rights Act. And, uh, Victor Crown uh, did. And Victor Crown's map did not, uh, and he had to back up off of certain aspects. You know it's not true. And, Come on, and, John. and, and why would you try Come to on, malign John. the Urban League and give people the idea that the Urban Look, League was in the bed? You just checked the record. The Urban the League, League's in the bed with black uh, incumbents in the uh, Democratic uh, Party. They, uh, that's not true. That is true. And, and, and I don't know too much about the state. That's why you didn't submit but, a map, but John, the state, because the Urban League well, submitted a map Well, but we're talking about the you. state map. That's why you didn't do your but, work. You but let the Urban League do Bruce, the work for you. Uh, everybody says, who knows anything about map making, that in the state, you and the other Harold Washington people got together with the Republicans and created such a uh, commotion that we lost several representatives, and that's why we do not have the power that we should have in Springfield. Now, that's I wasn't down there, but that's what that's that was in the papers. No, that's what people have paper. told you, yeah, and uh, people say that you did that. And I hope that they're wrong, because I've always well, had respect for you. Counts. But uh, I hope, but you know that that's what they're saying. Now you are here dealing with the same people who has caused us more confusion over this educational system, the D'Angelo's, the. Pates and all of those guys. Look, I have no and connection to are, any Republicans. Bruce, no connection well, to any yeah. Republican. Well, that's true. You can't Bruce. find a Republican who can stand up and tell you that he has any connections with Bruce, me. Bruce, I've, I've laid my case None. out. I've laid my None. case out. Okay. Well, but, but, but it's a spurious case. I've laid my what case you, What's you getting around? See, I, I did not see you talking with the DeAngelos and all those guys, Bruce. I did not see John, you. John, I talked I, to you. Did I see you talk? I talked to well, you. Well, Bruce, didn't you come in with Manny Hoffman? When you talked with Manny Hoffman, no, what is Manny Hoffman, Hoffman but the chair? Chairman of the Republican Party. Well, okay, now we don't have anything. Yeah. So we don't have any cameras to support any of these accusations. <laughs> right. But you, know, you, uh, you were quoting these are facts. Those are <laughs> not <accusations>. Okay, <laughs> but no, the, you were quoted in the paper saying that this map is not perfect, but it was the best we could do. What other obstacles were in the way from you creating or, or trying to develop a map that would be uh, suitable? Uh, uh, we drew a map that was suitable and it was accepted by uh, all of the uh, repable groups. Uh, in our community, and the only group that did not accept our map was Bruce's. And so I don't know what we could have done. We, 
any different that would have made this map a fair map. Now, you know that when you're dealing uh, uh, with the dynamics of drawing a map, it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. And I don't want to say that map is perfect. But all of the population is not in one section, as Bruce would, would indicate. Our population is sprinkled around where some of it definitely got to be in what you call a majority district. That's a white district because it's not enough African Americans or Mexicans to, <coughs> to create a district there. And we tried to do the very best we could, taking into consideration that a lot of different groups who want to be represented in this county. And when you're drawing a map, you're going to have to draw a map that's fair, just, and equitable. Mm -hmm. And we tried to do that, and uh, we gave Bruce an opportunity to participate, and he attended every meeting. And one day when you're down at the county building, and I'm on three and one half floor, you, I would like for you to see the transcripts. We took tr had transcripts and see how disrupted Bruce was at every meeting. He never came there to try to give us any real input. It was always a fight. And he had the right to go up and use the computer room, work things out with our people, do it himself if he wanted, bring his experts in. But instead, he would come from public meeting to public meeting. He's, one of the, he's probably the only witness who went to every public meeting and it was always a confusion. And more than most commissioners, too. It, it was, it, it was, and more uh, than most commissioners. But it, but it was a more than you. Yeah, because I yeah. wasn't charged to go to every meeting. <laughs> look, look but this is the Bruce, single most Bruce, important Bruce issue charged it, in Cook County. Bruce, but you had to do something else. No, it wasn't. I did not. Come on, I was give me a, a break. Uh, what we did is the, what we did was to break down uh, the committee. Uh, and each of us had uh, meetings that we would attend. And someone from that group would act as chairman. Mm -hmm. And I acted as chairman of several meetings, I think more. So Bruce knows that most of the things he says here uh, has the right for him to say and advocate his position. Mm -hmm. But many of those things he know outright not to be true. Okay. Well, and I'm very disappointed at Bruce because uh, he historically had not been that type of guy until he, he became a member uh, okay. the Harold Washington Republican okay. Party. Okay, well, let me say this because uh, we're out of time, but I want to thank you both for coming to uh, the program. We obviously have to do this again, but I want to thank you both for coming to the program. Well, thank you for inviting me. Okay. okay. Well, it is now that time in our program where we recommend a book to read, and the book we recommend this time is A Different Drummer by William Kelly. Um, this book, published in 1969, is a fictitious novel that takes place in a small southern town. The book focuses on three families. Two of them, the Lelands and the Calabams, are black working class folk, and the other family, the Williams, are a high middle class white family. This book is a classic example of the Negro's battle for full civil rights and equal human status in this country during a time <coughs> when segregation and Jim Crow laws were legally in effect. The book begins with the folk memory of an African prince who escaped from the slave market. Separate chapters are written, introducing and explaining the character of the members of the three families. The focal point of this novel is Negro protest and the problems inherent within rebellion by Negroes in a small southern town in that time. It gives white people who tried, I'm sorry, it also depicts the level of empathy given white people who tried to help Negroes during this time. This book is only 200 pages, but the writer creatively brings to light not only social problems black people face, but economic as well. Reading increases and expands your knowledge. Read a book. As uh, part of our culture segment, here's a video. I'll be all right.
Suddenly fight, break up, 